Hi, and welcome to Ear Training 101, Melodies, Intervals, and Scales. My name is Greg Fine, and in the first installment of the series, as the name implies, we're going to be focusing on pitches, intervals, melodies, scales, and so forth. Further installments in the series will focus on harmonies and chord progressions, rhythm, and listening skills as well. Before we embark on a course of study, it's a good idea to take a step back and look at the benefits the study will bring us. But before we look at those benefits, let's talk about what we're doing exactly when we're training our ears. What we're doing is learning to identify aspects of the music, such as pitches, intervals, harmonies, chord progressions, and rhythms, simply by listening to it. We hear the music, and we recognize its qualities. So, if we train our ears to identify intervals, let's say, we can listen to one pitch moving to another pitch and identify that that pitch has moved up a fourth, to take one example. Similarly, we can hear a tambourine part, and just by listening to it, we can say, oh, that tambourine is playing a 16th note subdivision. By training our ears, we increase our abilities as recipients of musical communication. We're informed by the music simply by listening to it. We understand what we're hearing, and we can make an analysis of it. So let's go ahead now and talk about what some of these benefits are. The first benefit we can talk about is the ability to play on your instrument what you're hearing in your head. In other words, you're connecting your fingers to your ears. You think a musical thought in your head, or you hear a musical idea in your head, and then without having to hunt and peck, so to speak, for the notes, you already know what those notes are. Now, you can see how this can be really beneficial to an improviser, for example. Let's say that you're a guitar player, and it's your moment to step up and take that amazing guitar solo. Now, sometimes that solo is written out, but often that solo is improvised. The guitarist will play it differently every night on the stage. And the whole idea of improvisation is to play in the moment. So the more immediate the communication between your ears and your fingers, the more you're able to express yourself in the moment. What you hear in your head is put into motion through your fingers without thinking, and your musical idea is transmitted. Another benefit we can talk about is the benefit for the listener in the audience. Certain styles like jazz and classical really benefit from a listener with a trained ear. You see, these styles of music call on the listener to be a more active participant in the music. The more knowledge that the listener has, the more trained their ears are to recognize what's happening in the music, the more fulfillment and enjoyment they'll get out of the performance. Let's take a jazz solo, for example. A technique that's often used in jazz is the technique of using a motif. With this technique, the soloist will incorporate a melodic or rhythmic idea into their solo which they'll return to throughout the solo and vary and embellish and so on. Well, the listener with the trained ear can pick up on this motif and enjoy the way that it progresses and gets transformed throughout the solo. Another way that ear training can be beneficial is in a rehearsal or gig type situation. Let's say that the band leader in a rehearsal plays you a musical figure, which they expect you to hear simply by ear and play back to them. This is a sort of oral dictation. Personally, I've been in many situations like this where I wasn't given any sheet music, nor was I given a recording of the music to learn from beforehand. I simply had to show up for the rehearsal and learn the parts on the spot. So when you're at that rehearsal and the band leader is playing you a chord progression for the song that you're working on, you'll be able to listen to it and identify the chord progression simply by hearing it. There are a couple of reasons why this actually might even be a superior way to learn. First of all, it obviously cuts down on the need for sheet music and to have somebody undergo the laborious process of notating all of that music. But also, learning by ear is a great way to absorb the material in a very direct and deep way. It's sort of like immediately absorbing and internalizing the music without anything visually getting in the way. Now, if I'm a songwriter or producer, ear training is highly beneficial because it can help me to absorb and understand the music that I'm listening to in a much deeper way, which in turn will help me to create my own music. For example, I'm in the car and I'm listening to a song on the radio. I can identify the chord progression that's used in the song, and then I can take that chord progression 
and use it, or some variation on it, in my own writing. I remember as a kid how I couldn't wait to get to my local music store to take a look at a particular songbook that contained a song that I really liked, just so I could see what its chord progression was. And to get out of having to actually buy that book, I would try to memorize what the progression was in the store, so that I could play the song on the piano when I got home. Now, with a trained ear, of course, identifying a progression through listening becomes much easier. If I can listen to the song, I can identify the chords. And what this does is give me insight into how the song is crafted and feeds me ideas for my own compositions as well. So now that you know some of the benefits of ear training, let's move on and look at things in more detail 